Um, you folks are about to understand why uh, it is that I follow auto racing in a print medium. As my uh, esteemed colleague uh, Pete Zanardi once said to me as I was trying to ramble through some explanation of something, he said, my friend, you have a voice made for newspapers. But when your longtime friend and mentor, Charlie Mitchell of the Norwalk Hour, asks you to stand in his stead, and uh, you're uh, taking it back at first, but then you realize you were very honored to be put in that position. And to be here and to be able to introduce such a worthy Hall of Fame candidate as Chick Stockwell makes it uh, a double honor. First, I'd like to read a, a letter that Charlie gave to me and uh, preface that by saying that last time I spoke with Charlie, he was doing well, everything would look to be uh, on schedule, the things that uh, the doctors said would happen were happening, uh, so things are looking good, keep your fingers crossed, say a prayer for our friend Charlie. And I'd like to read this letter as it goes, Congratulations, Chick, on your induction today into the New England Antique Racers Hall of Fame. Sorry I can't be with you on such a memorable occasion. You were always a pleasure to write about, Chick. In the more than 25 years I've known you and watched you win on asphalt and dirt, your demeanor never changed. A gentleman in every sense of the word. Your nine-track championship at the Danbury Race Arena, the point title that you won at the Rhinebeck Speedway, driving your dad's car, and the two superstock crowns that you won with Harvey Tattersall's United Racing Touring Series attest to your talent to drive any type of car uh, on any size track and be a winner. The New England, uh, the Hall of Fame doors are opening today for a truly gifted man who raced every competitor the same way, hard and clean. And Charlie goes on to say, also, my congratulations to my friend Jack Aroot, a man who I have known and admired since his purchase of Stafford over 30 years ago. Jack has done more to further short track racing in New England than any other individual. He and his family have placed Stafford Motor Speedway at the top of short track racing. It is the oval other facilities used as a measuring device. My congratulations to all the near inductees today in regards to the near members who worked so hard to make this organization so special. Sincerely, Charlie Mitchell, Motorsports Writer, uh, The Norwalk Hour. Now, when Charlie first asked me to uh, step in for him, we got to talking on the phone about the old Danbury days, and, uh, and of course, Chick in particular, and one of the first things that Charlie and I hit upon was the barn. Now, <laughs> uh, anyone that has known Chick well over the years has probably made a visit or several to the barn. Uh, my first time was when I was with the News Times in Danbury, Connecticut, which is my hometown. Uh, I made arrangements to uh, visit Chick one night for an interview, uh, probably in the late 1970s. Someone who knew Chick better at, than I suggested that I might want to bring along a few brews to help the conversation along. So, two of my good friends and fellow race fans at the time, Stephen and Peter Flanagan, we loaded up a cooler. And in the daytime, traversed the back roads of Woodbury, Connecticut, to find the barn. And um, we opened the cooler, and Chick entertained us for hours, stories about auto racing, and we took in the sights, which included any number of old race cars and, and dozens and dozens of trophies, all lining the walls there. And um, it went well. And then came the hard part. See, Chick had to walk merely walked back to his house. Now, the Flanagan brothers and I had to traverse the now dark back roads of Woodbury, Connecticut after quite a few brews. But we all survived. And uh, by now, you've probably all read the list of Chick's accomplishments in the program. Uh, the successes on dirt, on asphalt. Uh, I counted 12 points championships in there. Um, the thing that stood out to me is uh, those six consecutive most popular driver awards. Now, some people might discount those, um, but they shouldn't. There are a lot of drivers who win most popular driver awards uh, when the fans vote. But if their fellow competitors voted, they wouldn't stand a chance of getting those awards. I think you can relate to that. And over the years, I remembered 
and reported on any number of controversies at the race arena. I mean, it was just every Saturday night was some sort of had some sort of boiling point. Uh, I can remember the virtual two-year feud between Art Davis, Kenny Webb, and their fans in the stands. Uh, I remember Lou Funk Jr. and bringing that Chrysler kit car in, and that was that was a fodder for a lot of arguments. Uh, and then there was this LaJoy guy who always seemed to be getting into it with the club officials. But the one thing you never heard anybody, uh, that you never heard of, was anybody having a serious beef with Chick Stockwell. And with all those championships and feature victories, that's really saying something. Uh, I'm sure you can imagine any number of drivers nowadays who wouldn't hesitate to, bur to burn more than a few bridges, given the monetary rewards and the, and the publicity, to win a track championship, let alone nine of them. Any uh, race arena recollections that I have, uh, I, I sometimes filter them through uh, Bone Stevens. And I sort of blame Bones and uh, for getting me into this a bit. Because when I was growing up, my uh, next door neighbor, Jeff George, was a big Bone Stevens fan. And, and when Jeff got his license, uh, he would drive us up to New Fairfield every Saturday afternoon to wax whatever car Bones was driving that year. And my particular favorite, when you had to see it, was a Cadillac. So I asked Bones about racing with Chick, and he, would, he said it was very educational. He was a person that would help you as much as he would race with you. He was a kind of casual, he just kept on driving, didn't bother anybody. He was just a low-key, regular guy, a friend to everybody. He was smooth and consistent and fast. He made time just by being so smooth. Where guys would be really struggling with their cars, he just drove around the racetrack. He didn't have to slow down for the corners like the rest of us. Any great champion needs a great rival. Um, for Chick at the race arena, uh, probably uh, toward the end of uh, it would have to be a fellow near Hall of Fame driver, Don LaJoy. Oddly, Donnie used Chick as a driving role model. What worked for Chick wound up working for Don. And so I called Don a couple weeks ago and we got to talking about, the, about this and he told me that I was in the grandstand and watched Chick race as a spectator and I saw him on dirt and on asphalt. And I tell you, his, I enjoyed his driving, his cleanliness, all his moves, they were smooth. I decided that when I started driving, that he was going to be my idol. And I was going to try to drive like him. Not like a bull in a china closet. And I'll put in my own here. It, it, is, it would be easy to be a bull in a china uh, uh, cabinet at Danbury without even trying. Uh, this is the place where, toward the end, when the, the cars got uh, so fast and the, law, and the walls were so low that they often left the field of play, shall we say, and uh, wound up in the pits just off the fourth term. And it happened with such regularity, and fortunately it didn't result in a tragedy, that some uh, pundit put a small sign in the grass in the in the pit area in the fourth turn and it said, caution, low-flying stock cars. So Donnie went on to say that there were a lot of us who were a little wild and some of us who stayed, in the, uh, some of us who stayed wild and never grew out of it. Chick was very, very friendly, never outspoken, not like I was when I would get in trouble with the club. Very seldom was he ever put in that position. He won the race fair and clean and that was it. I don't even remember having a tough time or argument with Chick and I know I've had my disputes with others quite a few times. And Donnie Sam summed it up by saying he was a nice person, and he's still a nice person. And today this nice guy and great, great driver goes into the near antique, the New England Antique Racers Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Chick Stockwell.
and I want to talk too much, so I'm going to make it pretty short. I just want to thank everybody for here and everybody for having us here. And I want to thank mainly my pit crews for sticking with me for so long, especially in the real early days. Thank you, everybody.